everyone. Welcome to episode number 514 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Folks, I got a fish fry full of photonics this week, and I'm not afraid to use them. My guest is Maurice, or Mo, Steinman, VP of Engineering at Lightelligence. Mo and I are chatting all about why Lightelligence is on a mission to be the leader in silicon photonics computing. The details of PACE, Lightelligence's first fully integrated optical computing platform, and what sets this computing platform away from traditional silicon chips. So, without further ado, please welcome Mo to Fish Fry. Hi, Mo. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Amelia. First of all, I just wanted to thank you for having me on the podcast. It's very exciting for our company and for me personally. Excellent. Okay, so first off, let's talk about Lightelligence. So, what exactly is Lightelligence? And your mission is to be the leader in silicon photonics computing. That's that's quite a mission, Mo. Yes. So Lightelligence is an MIT spin-out. Uh, we were founded just over five years ago, right at the end of 2017. The company was founded based on the PhD research of our CEO and co-founder, Yichen Shen. And his research was kind of at an interesting intersection of maybe two unlikely domains, the combination of nanophotonics and artificial intelligence. So Yichen had proposed that certain arithmetic operations, which are fairly prevalent in AI processing, specifically uh, matrix multiplication. Those could be done in the photonic domain with optical computing, with you know advantages in latency and lower power. And since then, been able to build upon the founding core of the company and assemble a really strong team of folks who are driven to sort of reinvent computing and commercialize it. Excellent. So let's take it back a second, Mo. What trends in general are you seeing driving the need for photonics in computing? Yeah, there's really sort of several factors at, at play. So if you kind of look at what's going on in the landscape of computing today, computation and data throughput demands, they've been growing exponentially, uh, primarily fueled by the needs of AI and you know data science. And these huge AI models with billions or trillions of parameters, they're placing an enormous demand on computation and the interconnect between computing elements and even storage. And frankly, it's hard, maybe it's impossible to really to keep up with the pace of growth. So we kind of need to do something different, right? And if you look at traditional electronic devices, there's a slowing of the so-called Moore's law where the generational scaling of electronic chips from generation to generation. It's getting harder and harder to do that, more costly, and even power density is becoming a challenge. There's sort of an end in sight there. So we think that photonics is a new and powerful tool in the arsenal to kind of address these challenges in both computation and interconnect. And you know, if you look at the needs of AI computing, the low latency is one thing, but what's interesting about AI, it's sort of a statistical kind of workload, right? And so it's fairly well suited to the analog nature of optical computing. And so we can tolerate a little bit of uh, imprecision. And in some cases, the algorithms benefit from the presence of some of that inexact computation. And so we think this is a really good intersection of need and a solution that's able to address those needs. Now on the data interconnect side, photonics provides advantages over traditional electronics in reach, uh, raw bandwidth, and even the sort of the diversity of interconnectivity of being able to create fairly complex topologies. And of course, you know, in a power efficient manner over standard electrical cabling. And it's sort of a way to attack the so-called memory wall, as they call it. So the PACE optical computing platform is Lightelligence first product. So let's talk about PACE. What does PACE do that's different from traditional chips? So PACE, which stands for Photonic Arithmetic Compute Engine, it was a purpose-built device that at its heart performs very fast matrix multiplication, which again is our foundational technology. What makes it different from traditional silicon chips 
is sort of in its composition. It's a, it's a heterogeneous architecture. It's comprised of two chips that are stacked on top of each other, like all of our designs. One of them is our photonic chip, which is mostly built out of standard CMOS processing, but instead of transistors and wires, you've got waveguides, modulators, interferometers, photodiodes, and optical couplers, sort of different stuff built on there. And the photonic chip requires a laser light source to power it. And there's a number of features that we build into the photonic chip that basically manipulate this light to perform the arithmetic operations. And, you know, like I mentioned, it's a heterogeneous architecture. It's a two chip stack. So there's a companion traditional electronic chip, which has both analog and digital circuits on it that sort of works in tandem and controls and monitors the photonic device. And so to do math in the optical domain, it involves encoding data as sort of an intensity of light you know, dark to full brightness gives you a, a range of values. And also by shifting the phase of the light, if you think of the wave nature, it has a frequency and there's a phase there. So by manipulating the intensity and the phase, you can then allow light, you know, say pairs of beams of light to interfere with each other. And you get either constructive or destructive interference between say pairs of channel and the resulting intensity of the light that comes out of that interference structure is an arithmetic function. And then if you can do that at a large enough scale, you can put together some pretty significant computing power. In fact, PACE has 10,000 of such photonic devices to create a powerful compute array. Wow. So Mo, what kind of applications are best suited for PACE? So PACE was built to run something we call the Ising algorithm, which is a pretty well-known algorithm. And I'd characterize it sort of as in an adjacent space to, to AI. But the Ising algorithm was developed to analyze atomic spin direction in, in sort of a field or an array of particles. And while it turns out to be useful for studying those material properties, it can also be generalized for a much broader class of, of applications that have nothing to do with material or atomic spins and things like that. A broader class of problems, which are these NP hard problems, which have sort of a huge state space to analyze. And sometimes you'll hear them as max cut or min cut algorithms. You could think of optimization problems where there's a large array of elements and they're all sort of interacting with each other. And you're trying to identify some minimum or maximum path or state of this very complex structure. And it's just a huge state space to try to analyze using traditional methods. A common example might be the, uh, the traveling salesman problem. So you can think of an array of destinations and there's different properties of those destinations, maybe traffic conditions. And it's, it's a very difficult optimization problem. And again, what's really interesting about this Ising algorithm is it's really generalizable to this broader class of applications. So what can we expect from you guys moving forward this year, 2023, 2024? So we talked about PACE and that's one of our categories of product, the pure computing product. And we're going to continue to work on a development of the next generation follow-on to PACE. So that's already underway. Another focus is in the area of optical interconnect, using waveguides to carry information in the form of light and connecting devices together over a variety of topologies, whether it's at the package level or the board level, or even the system or data center level. And at the package scale, sort of at the lower end, we're calling that optical network on chip or ONOC. And we can be a little loose on the definition of chip, but sort of that size of infrastructure. And we're working hard on an ONOC-based project, and we're targeting to be able to debut this technology later this year. Fantastic. So if my audience is interested in more information, where should they go? Well, we have our website, which is lightelligence.ai, not .com, it's .ai. You can also follow us on social media. We have LinkedIn and Twitter presence there. Just look for at Lightelligence. Other things will be at the Photonics West Conference at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. That's right at the end of January, crossing into the beginning of February. One of our employees, our VP of Photonics, will be giving a talk at that conference. And we'll also have a booth there, number 5340, if you're looking through the Expo Center. Fantastic. All right, Mo, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, we were talking earlier about your IOT home setup. So what kind of optimizations do you got going on, Mo? Well, so I, I'm an aficionado or a fan of smart home automation. Maybe it's an obsession. Maybe it's a hobby. <laughs> you know, the, the lines are sort of blurry. 
it started off very simply as something I needed to be able to control something uh, with an on-off switch while I was outside and the switch was inside. And so it was sort of born out of laziness or, or efficiency. <laughs> And then once I, you know, saw how that could work, I said, the application space here could be pretty broad. So now almost all of my lights, the, the locks to the house, the sound system, the air conditioning and heating, it's all has some sort of smart automation that works most of the time. And when it doesn't work, I usually hear about it. But, you know, the vast majority of the time, it, it's, it's, it's a fun hobby and, and it makes life a little easier. I love it. We share that in common, Mo. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks so much, Amelia. It's been my pleasure. If you want even more fish fries about photonics, you're in luck. In a new fish fry podcast playlist on YouTube, I investigate a variety of innovations in photonics. I chat with Dr. E.L. Cohen, co-founder and CEO of Cognifiber, about Cognifiber's glass-based chips, proprietary fibers, and embedded waveguides. I also investigate a new ultra-compact integrated photonic device developed by the University of Chicago's Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering that could pave the way for a new class of integrated photonic circuits. This playlist also includes my discussion about the evolution of photonics and why photonics is finding its way into machine learning and artificial intelligence today with self-professed crazy scientist and photonics expert, Giles Lamont. I also examine a new optical fiber-enabled early earthquake detection system and how fiber optics are ushering in a new age of ruggedized communication. And you can check out this new playlist by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com or you can also just head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we do have that YouTube channel I just mentioned, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. (laughs) And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review and five stars on that podcasting platform of your choice. Also, if you'd like any more information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of January 13th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.